Welcome to part 2 of this tutorial on bacterial genome analysis in which we teach you how to analyze bacterial genomic data and to interpret important information from the bacterial genome. Processing genome data from bacterial genome sequencing projects involves several steps. The first step involves filtering of raw reads. The second step involves removal of adapters, which we have discussed in our previous slide presentation. The third step involves assembly of reads. We next scan for ORFs and coding regions, validate the completeness of genome sequencing using RNA analysis, conduct a similarity search using a basic local alignment search tool algorithm, and graphically represent the data and finally apply specific tools to analyze features such as antibiotic resistance using anti-smash or specific pathways using the KEGG tool. Data analysis is centered around specific questions which the investigator seeks to address. The first question may be what do you want to discover? The second question focuses on application of the data. For instance, an uh, investigator may want to focus on antibiotic resistance profiling. He or she obtains microbial resistance profiling data from the lab and intends corroborating this with genomic information. Some microbiologists may be interested in identifying novel genes associated with pathways for the biosynthesis of important compounds. Pathogenesis is an important aspect of microbial genome analysis and the evolution of pathogenesis may be dependent on pathogenicity islands as well as secretion systems. Genome data analysis can provide insights into the basis for pathogenesis. Bioprocess engineers may be interested in applying microbes for downstream applications such as the production of compounds of biotechnological interest. This can be done by doing a pathway analysis in which specific carbon sources and growth precursors can be identified using genome sequence data. Epidemiologists may want to develop linkages between epidemics and specific pathogens. This can be done using linkage studies in which case microbial genomes from a pan-global study can be linked to each other via linkage. One of the first steps which needs to be undertaken when genome sequencing assembly is being done is the read quality. So read quality basically looks at the raw reads obtained from the sequencing platform. Raw reads can be classified based on their Q score. So most assemblies require Q30 and above in order to obtain an accurate genome assembly. Fast QC is an important tool which can be applied to determine the Q value. As you can see, the reads within this particular bracket represents high quality reads with a good Q score, whereas these are reads with poor quality. Now, as you can see, as the sequencing reaction proceeds along the specific DNA fragment, the read quality tends to drop. Ideally, high quality reads are represented in this figure, in which case a majority of the reads are within this green quadrant, whereas this is a mixture of reads. Now, in order to resolve this issue, bioinformaticians resort to binning of the reads, in which case low and high quality reads are separated. This can result in a loss of a substantial amount of data. However, this needs to be done in order 
to ensure accuracy of the assembled genome sequences. Another aspect which provides an insight into quality is the GC ratio. So a skew in the GC ratio is an indication of a bad output. So this shows you the GC counts per read in red and the theoretical distribution along the blue L-shaped curve. This can give an indication of DNA quality. So if you obtain a skew in the GC quality, you need to look back at your DNA extraction protocols as well as your DNA shearing protocols, as both of these can contribute to the bias in GC quality. Adapter removal is, can be done using specific software. For instance, if you use Illumina pad and data, you can use their online tool available at the base space platform. The tool is known as Illumina Clip. Alternatively, you can use a Trimomatic software, which will run on a Linux platform to remove the adapters. Adapter removal is essential as non-removal of adapters can result in misassembly and adapter contamination. Many microbiologists may be interested in assessing their genome data for contamination. This needs to be done because in some cases it may be very difficult to obtain an exanic culture, especially from microbes that are isolated from soil. So if you have any doubts regarding the contamination of your primary genome data with contaminants obtained from other microbes, you can perform an analysis using tools such as Kraken or you can use a corona plot to determine the degree of contamination. Now what this tool will essentially do is map your reads to the gene bank reads and it will give you a fairly accurate indication of the read quality. So this is a typical corona plot. So if your genome were pure, or in this case uncontaminated, a majority of reads would map back to the primary organism. However, if the read quality is poor, and if you have contamination, you will have a mixture of organisms within this corona plot. In this case, you need to look back at your microbial isolation protocols and isolate an exanic culture and perform a resequencing. Now, genome assembly is done using KMERS, the concept of KMER. For instance, in this example, there are six hypothetical reads from DNA sequences. And during the tutorial, you can ask the students to split these into four MERS and then assemble these four MERS on the basis of KMERS. This will provide students with an idea of the concept of KMER. So genome assembly is done using the filtered reads. So Illumina reads can be assembled using short read assemblers such as spades. Long reads obtained from single molecule real-time sequencing platforms such as Pacific Biosciences can be assembled using HCAP, which is a Celera based assembler. Many microbiologists may obtain sequencing data from two different platforms, for instance Illumina short reads as well as long reads. So assembly in this case can be done using Velvet, Abyss or Soap De Novo assemblers. So at the end of the assembly process, you should obtain a single contig ideally or more than one contig in case your genome has gaps or in, in case the genome sequencing is incomplete. If bacterial genomes contain a plasmid, you may obtain two or more assemblies or two or more contigs. Subsequent to genome assembly, you need to carry out validation of your assembly. This can be done by mapping the genome back to uh, original genome using a BLAST algorithm or you can carry out a PCR-based 
design in which case you will assemble your genome then design specific primers along your assembled fragment and map this back by carrying out a PCR reaction in vitro. So these are the steps involved in validation of genome assembly. In the next tutorial, we will be focusing on specific analytical software for the analysis of the bacterial genome. Thank you for watching.